On Drop Rate is a series all about testing my luck. Each episode I will pick one or multiple activities to do and one specific unique to get from those activities. But there is a twist. I am only able to do this activity until I am exactly on Drop Rate. Kill 5000 Listen Men Shamans to get a Dragon Warhammer. Defeat 512 Venonares to achieve a Treasonous Ring or loot 300 Rifts to obtain an Abyssal Needle are all ideas going by this rule. To spice it up even further, if I manage to get the item within the limited attempts, I get to keep everything I earned including the unique item. If I do not get it however, I have to forfeit half of all the money I earned during the grind to one of you guys, the viewers. But now, let's get into the video. But before we get into the content, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. I actually personally have over 300 hours of experience with this game and if you're into turn-based games with a ton of depth gear-wise and encounter-wise, this is absolutely a game for you. The game is free to download and has over 600 champions to play around with who are split into various factions. One of the best looking and the most diverse factions, combat and visually in my opinion, are the High Elves. The faction includes one of the game's most iconic characters, Elhane, basically the female version of Legolas from Lord of the Rings, so do I really have to say more? She is extremely useful early game and is acquired right away at the start of your journey, so that really helps. Story-wise, the High Elves also have a really interesting past, forming a civilization thousands of years ago conquering massive battles between orcs and lizardmen. They also have a past of corruption by the hand of Syroth, manipulating some of the High Elves into Dark Elves. In the end, however, the Dark Elves ended up exiled, so I suppose the High Elves are still the better faction. But talking about factions in general, this month is huge for Raid on that front and more. They have just released a new faction called Sylvan Watchers, which includes champions like Forest Elves, Ents, Druids and Fae's. Along with that, they have a massive lineup of events and a new season of the Forge Pass, which includes some really powerful pieces of gear for your champions. Also, if you do have Amazon Prime, you get exclusive rewards right now, so download the game and check it out. This is absolutely the best time to get into Raid if you've ever thought about trying it out. Click on the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen to get unique bonuses worth $30 to kick off your journey. This includes a free epic champion called Vergus, which is a really good champion, 200,000 silver, a full energy refill, one ancient shard and one XP boost. Ancient Shards being the item you summon new champions with for your roster. You will be able to find all the rewards right here when you're in-game. With all that said, if you want to support me and try out a great game at the same time for free, download Raid today through my links. But let's get back into the video. In this episode of One Drop Raid, we're traveling back to the God Wars dungeon to take on the fourth general in this series, which is going to be Commander Siliana. We're going to be killing up to 508 Commander Silianas with the hopes of seeing the Saradomin's Hilt, which is currently of this recording worth 22 million GP, so getting that would be beautiful. Other notable drops I could be getting in this video is the Armadillo Crossbow, which is worth 34 million, and the Saradomin's Sword and Saradomin's Light, which is way more common, but worth a lot less. Commander Siliana is, in my opinion, the by far easiest boss in the entire God Wars dungeon to solo because really all you have to do is run around in a circle in the room and hit the boss and she can never reach you. And using any crossbow, bow Ferdinand, and twisted bow, anything like that with decent range works perfect. The last video had a giveaway of 50 million GP from the Brimstone Keys and all the Slayer and we had 2200 comments which is insane. And the winner is going to be Jay Collins saying anything. Congrats. And there it is, so that is the 50 million GP given away to JB Chillin. Max Nick coming in absolutely clutch, lending me a twisted bow for this challenge, which is going to help quite a lot. And he does make his own videos on his channel called Max Nick. He has a series called Tumican Shadow from Zero GP. You should definitely go check it out, it will be in the description. Because we have a Twisted Bow, I'm going to be investing in the Masori gear again, which has dropped by quite a bit since last time I bought it. And last time I bought Masori, I ended up losing like 40 million GP on it, so hopefully I will not lose too much GP on it this time. But before we get into the actual kills, I do have to get some ecumenical keys, and I've actually for the first time ever started using these tag tabs in my bank, so I have an entire one set up for ecumenical keys now, and one for all the Saradomin supplies. Now, just like every single God Wars boss, I have been extremely lucky. Bandos, I've got everything basically. Kriara, I've got a completed log. And for Krill, I've also got basically everything, just not the pet and staff of the dead in 156 kill counts. Commander Siliana is no different. In 399kc, I've got everything except the pet. So, if we could get the pet this video, that would be very nice. 
But if you're curious, this is the gear I'm going to be using, and this is pretty subject to change with my inventory. I've never really used Masori and a Twisted Bow with a Serpentine Helmet to Venom the Minions, and a Light Bearer for more Blowpipe Specs on this boss. I might have to change this up a bit, I'll see after the first run. And the first kill of the video is going to be... Coins, and that is now 400 KC by the way. So venoming the minions is very simple. Each time the boss spawns, the minion spawns right after. You hit all the minions one time each with the serpentine helmet and the blowpipe. This is a 100% chance when you do damage to venom them. That is all the hits completed. And now after the kill, they are going to have taken a good amount of venom damage and should be like less than half HP when the boss actually dies. Hey, the first drop of the grind, God Sword Shard 2. I'm sure there's some Iron Man who are fuming right now over that specific shard, but uh, for our main account, only 270k. Well, I suppose the Light Bearer with Blowpipe Specs and actually using the Bones to Peaches is really strong for keeping your HP high, and also the Masori gear is really tanky, so you can see I didn't really use many Saradomi Brews at all, but my restores are definitely running out, so in the future... Oh no, I'm walking, this is not good. In the future, I am going to be bringing more restores than I did this time, and maybe even like 3 or 4 Saradomi Brews should be good enough. And this is where we ran out of prayer, so the last kill of the trip is going to be some coins and the loot I got from all the kills is on the screen right now, and that is 15 kills on the first trip, but I should be able to get slightly bit more than that if I do bring more restores and maybe one more stamina. I knew it, <laughs> I knew one of these drops were inevitable. That is kind of early in as well, that is 32 kills in and we got a 1 in nearly 1.7k drop rate, the Chaos Talisman. Which is actually worth like 100 GP, so that is probably one of the worst drops I could have got. That is the end of the second trip, and definitely a better one. We got 20 kills this time, so the inventory is upgraded in terms of what I brought, but uh, I still have two entire Saradomi brews left, so I can still optimize this a bit, but uh, I don't want to remove two more Saradomi brews and only bring two next time, because if I do take some extra damage, I don't want to have to teleport out or die. But I mean, when it comes to food, I only really use Saradomi Brews in the beginning when I don't have any peaches. And after a while, when I've used all the restores and stuff, I have basically infinite peaches. So I don't really use food at all at that point from Saradomi Brews, only really peaches. Yo, let's go! First elite clue scroll of the grind. That is surprisingly rare from this boss. It's 1 in 250, so pretty much exactly the same as the Saradomi Light. So I just used up my last ecumenical key and I actually have just been informed about a way I can bypass the kill count. So I can basically just do a Saradomin trip and then pretty much almost right away get into another one without having to use any ecumenical keys. So let's actually go over that right now. The first thing I have to do is buy the Sarite Van Braces for 180 million which is pretty much all the money that I have left. Second thing I do is get one last ecumenical key. This is the last one I will ever have to get. All right, so we have all the things. We have completed a run, and this is now where I teleport out of the room instead of teleporting literally to like Edgeville or something like that. And now I run over to the next area. Now, because I have the Sarite Van Braces, none of these minions will aggro me, so I can actually just get the kill count right here, and I still have my 88 Saradomin kill count. And there is actually a bank right over here. I don't know if I can... Yes, there we go. I can see it right there through the wall. I can bank resupply and run back up. And I already have the KC. And if you're not aware, by the way, these minions, the spiritual mages, in this Saros area for next, actually give it 5 kill counts every single time. So when this dies, I get 5. And you also only need 40 here, just like all the other areas. So getting the kill counts here is definitely a lot faster than farming ecumenical keys. And that is everything restocked, and I can enter the room right away again without having to get the kill count again, and no ecumenical keys. A very uneventful first 100 KC, maybe I actually die here, hopefully I don't, that would at least make it a bit more eventful. The loot is on the screen right now, nothing really at all, except the god sword shard that we got, and the elite clue scroll, which by the way I had to drop, I could not complete it, it was like a 10 hour grind that I had to do to complete it, so basically nothing so far. Oh my god, Saradomin's light is on the ground. That is a 1 in 254, half the drop rate of the crossbow and the hilt. So that is definitely not what you want to see for the first major drop. 
Because I'm an excellent YouTuber, I missed 200kc, so this is 201kc, but uh, all we've seen so far is the Godsword Shard, the Saradomin's Light, and the Elite Clue Scroll. So, uh, nothing too eventful just yet, hopefully that can turn around. No! Ah, I died. So, we just hit the halfway point of the grind, 254 kill counts, and at this point, as both the hilt and the crossbow is 1 in 508, we should have got one of them right now, but we have not even seen a Saradomin sword, the only thing we've seen is the Saradomin's light, which is pretty much worth as much as a Saradomin sword, so not really the best I've ever done in a grind. Oh yes, another Sarah Domin's Light. Of course, of course, we take those. I feel like I have to mention this. I've killed some of these ancient mages, the spiritual mages, and some of them outside Sarah Domin as well. I did die and I had to get some Casey again. I have got five dragon boots from, uh, how many is this? Like 250 spiritual mages. That's quite lucky. Unfortunately, they're not worth a lot, but uh, always nostalgic to see this on the ground when it actually happens. Looks like uh, that's pretty good. No, you have got to be kidding me. A third Saradomis light. <laughs> uh, because it's only 100k, I don't even get the pleasure to see it broadcasted in my clan. Maybe that's for the best, though. When I'm not lucky at Saradomin, I guess my luck evens out with Dragon Boots. Another pair. Six pairs now in total. No! This is not real, man. What? A fourth Saradomin light. Dude, it's going up in price every time. It was 100k last time, 116k this time. Maybe if we get a fifth one, it's going to be 132k. Yes, dude! I thought I was not going to be getting anything this entire video except Saradomin's Light. There it is. Armital Crossbow, 364kc in, 32.5 million GP. Finally, we managed to get something. It's not the item we need for the challenge, but that's a lot of money. We are getting closer and closer to the end of the grind, and that is KC number 400 on Commander Siliana. And you can see I've made 42.1 million, and pretty much all of that is just from the crossbow, so that was quite relieving to see, I'm not gonna lie. I do have to say though, if I do not manage to get at least one Saradomin sword during this grind, and I ended up getting four Saradomin's light and one crossbow, I am going to be stunted. There is just no way this is possible. What is happening? Five Saradomin's light. I mean, I'll take the 116k. Oh, let's go! There we go. 22.4 million GP. I'm not really sure how many kills that was, but like 440, something like that. Everything is on the screen right now. Oh, the golden beam looks so good. That is another challenge one and pretty close to the line as well. And so this is now my collection log for Siliana. It keeps being absolutely insane. We got no Saradomin swords in this video, just a lot of Saradomin lights. But we do also have some clue scrolls. We have two hard clue scrolls to open. The elite that I got earlier, I cannot complete. But I did get two hard clue scrolls from the minions. So let's go ahead and do that. First one is a very mediocre 100k. And the second one is a unique Gothic Crozier, but uh, also 100k. Honestly, just look at this inventory. I don't even know what to say. Like, <laughs> just in Saradomi's lights, I made 500k. And then the dragon boots that I got from the KC, I made even more than that. Like 600k. And then, of course, adding these two, the big valuables. We made 56 million during this video. Of course, we used some supplies. But we definitely made a decent amount of profit. But I do have a twisted bow to give back to Max Nick, and a massive thank you again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring the video. Sponsors like that is the reason I can do the bigger grinds and spend more time on the videos that I create. So again, a massive thank you to them, and click the links in the pinned comment and the description to check the game out. But with that said, thank you all so much for watching this episode of On Drop Rate. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe and all that good stuff, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Wait, hold on a second. Look at this guy. He's called Level 1 Thieving. He has a Rocky pet, the Thieving pet. He is actually one thieving. That has to be the luckiest thieving pet ever.